Hello, and welcome to Season 3 of Super Pros Pros. I'm Player 2, Eli, and with me as always is... Player 1, Ike, and Vincent Van Bro. Did you know that this pod is on YouTube, SoundCloud, and Spotify? I did not, bro Jogan. I thought this is the same place as people could. Like. Comment. Share. And subscribe. Yeah, sounds about right. I don't know a better alternative. Alright. Uh, <laughs> so what's been what's been going on in your your end of the world? So we didn't record last weekend, right? No. Okay, so it's been like a couple weeks. Let's see. Yes. Been hanging out with my lady friend, which I am going to do more of after we finish recording. Uh-huh. Um played so last weekend i did something that i've no, i don't think i've ever done before it's also kind of a rarefied position uh went to a magic tournament <laughs> super rare so played a uncharacteristic whooped, you even. whooped ass in the tournament and top aided never happened before and then <laughs> that sounds about right played a fuck you played a <laughs> 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 A little break to just fuck you. <laughs> Got him. Beat a child in the top eight. <laughs> that never happened before. I've never, I've never wholesale whooped a child's ass. Just wholesale child abuse. <laughs> yeah, just fucking. I'm doing what your papa never had the strength to. Just, wow. Uh, but then, I so. These are qualifier tournaments. If you win, you get a qualification. If you don't, you don't. But they're still prizing. And yeah. friend was done in the tournament, getting kind of late. I was playing in the tournament to just get a little prize, but also block for friends so that they could hopefully qualify and go to the same tournament I was going to in, like, next sure. February. And the guy I came with had lost. The friend I had in the top eight lost. I beat this kid, and then I was like, hey, judge, can I still concede if I want to? And my opponent, like, nearly broke his head, turning around in excitement <laughs> at the possibility <laughs> of not lo- having being dead in the tournament. And she's like, yeah, I guess. I was like, all right, fuck it. And then I was just like, yeah, you win. Congratulations. He's like, oh, I was like, yeah, yeah. shook his hand, and he appreciated it vehemently. I was like, nice. There you go. So did that, which is yeah, check that off the bucket list. Um let's see. Really been disliking teaching fucking <laughs> I have to teach ninth and tenth graders biology and not even teach, like run a study hall for biology for like three hours out of a week. It's just one Thursday afternoon for a three hour chunk. And I literally, like, loathe it, mark it on my calendar, and, like, <laughs> the whole time. <laughs> it is my least favorite moment of my week by a mile. Um, other than that, let's see. It sounded, sounded like fucking uh the top of jerry scream almost there oh yeah they're like <laughs> ah! <laughs> oh my god yeah <laughs> we need you to calm down there <laughs> um well, that's all it's going that's all it's been going on i'm trying to think back through Last weekend was that, then we recorded, so I would have talked about anything then. So it's just been the last two weeks. I think it's just been, like, tournament and business as usual. It was kind of funny, though, for two days in a row. So Mm -hmm. on the 21st, hung out with my lady friend. Her car had uh, trouble and needed to get the battery replaced. Mm -hmm. On the 22nd, friend was going to go pick me up, we're going to go play Magic. His car had (laughs) battery trouble and he had to get the battery replaced like back-to-back days i'm like 
is it me? <laughs> like, am I right. am I with my mind bullets killing batteries? Like, what the fuck's yeah. going on here? Are we the baddies? Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, so I think that's more or less what's been going on. Going to a tournament this, like, this is going to be after it comes out. But we're recording this on the 29th of September. Next weekend, I will be in Washington, D.C. Or, I think not technically, but I'll be at the Dulles Expo Center playing in what is probably going to be the last single. So, the tournament I'm going to is the regional championship. And up until this one, they will be one per season in the United States. However, moving forward, we're going to be copying like the um, the Canadian system and making them two per season. So they're going to get cut in half. So this is going to be the biggest one, but it's also going to be the last one. So hopefully do well, but it's going to be like 1,800 people or something stupid. It's going to be huge. Moving forward, hmm. they're going to be like around 1,000 probably. A little bit more acceptable. But yeah, so playing in this tournament it's gonna be a blast making some last minute changes which not loving but you know through talking to smarter people than me and oddly enough therapy getting fucking getting past feeling like awkward and shitty about making last minute changes and being less prepared than i'd liked because reality doesn't give a fuck about how ready you are no, it's pretty remorseless in that regard. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the thing. I wasn't ready. Still have the thing. Goodbye. <laughs> oh, yay. Anywho, that's what's been going on with me. What's been going on with you? Um, so, a couple weeks ago was my birthday on the 18th. Woo! I'm 31. Mazel tov. <laughs> um, I ended up taking my actual birthday off work i just kind of fucking rotted at home it's great um and that weekend i went down to hang out with uh hop and nicole down in oregon um that was pretty fun and i'm drinking a fair amount as i always do overeating for sure and i ended up going to watch like their kids soccer game because it's like oh cool you're coming I'm like yeah okay guess i'm going um which it's weird because i played soccer for a long time as a kid mm -hmm. but i've never been on like the parent side of it which was a little strange feeling oh interesting i hadn't thought yeah. about that yeah it's like huh well then um they won one zero hell yeah Woo! um oh yes and then i got to <laughs> just piss off hop's brother <laughs> Because he was being a bit of a petty bitch. Um, dude. Also, they're playing a fuck ton of Dice Miner. Because, holy shit. I, Nicole had apparently never played it. And so I was like, I would play play around. And then she's like, again. 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 It's like, we ended up playing like fucking nine rounds in a row. I created a monster. Um. <laughs> Uh, this week has been pretty business as usual. I hung out with Eli Tuesday? Yeah, it was Tuesday, because they had to leave, because they were leaving, like, Thursday or something. Um, so that was really nice. Um, and then, uh, yeah, here we are. So, we not, not a whole hell of a lot happening, other than I started playing Space Marine 2, which is pretty fun. And it's basically Gears of War meets the 40k universe. Good fun. Um, Are you at all excited for the movie that's going to come out? And the movie or show that's going to come out in the near distant future? Or do you not have that much investment in Warhammer at all? I do not have much investment in Warhammer at all. Okay. It, it, like, if you ask me anything fucking lore-related lore about Warhammer, <sighs> nothing. Like, it's cool. It has some dope art. It has some interesting shit. Like, I also, all I really know about its lore is that it's kind of constantly getting retconned. And it's like, what is actually canon? And the objective canonicity of things is fucking questionable as shit. That's about all I know about Warhammer. 
Fair enough. Eh, I, I'm you think s- us being in game stores our whole entire lives, we'd know something more than, oh, those things are figurines, and these nerds use fucking, like, uh, rulers. Rulers, Measuring yeah. Tape. Measuring tape. Dude, okay, hold on. Brief aside. Right. I was at... Where was this? I think it was my local game store. I don't think it was the game store I went to to play in this tournament where I conceded. Sure. And, like, magic players are nerdy. Plenty of us suck in different ways. I I would say every human sucks in its own individual way. Lovely, beautiful. It's what sets us apart from animals or something. Fucking whatever. Okay. But, holy fuck. I have never been more vindicated in being like, nah, our game's better, we're less douchey, whatever, then, and it's like, it was a beautiful interaction between people, but it was the most, like, pushes glasses up nose, being like, um, actually, and it was this guy's like, alright, I'm gonna attack your units, he goes, your units can only shoot for 12 inches, he goes, yeah, he goes, my units are 12.1 inches away, I was like, oh my god you <laughs> suck <laughs> holy fuck <laughs> i was so i was like oh i'm playing the right game today boys you guys are douchebags like oh fuck that never will like that moment never will i ever play that game <laughs> 12.1 go fuck yourself <laughs> which also I forgot about this because my yesterday was so much fun, even though I did fuck all when it comes to winning. Okay, sorry. As we haven't gotten to the bits, I'm retaking the what happened. Okay. So yesterday, got up, did my therapy, had a lot of breakthroughs because my therapist is awesome. Yeah. Leave, go with friends, go to my car. I had a ticket for parking in a crosswalk where there's no goddamn crosswalk. And I've been parking there for a year. And I see park people park there all the goddamn time in the exact same spot. <laughs> what the fuck? I don't know. So that's my day starting. Neat. I have to fucking contest that bullshit now. Although, once you figure out the bureaucracy of the way the LA fucking parking system works, it's not that bad because you can do it digitally. But figuring that out isn't the most obvious thing in the world. Sure. Anyway, right, so. to to that point and a later video, American bureaucracy needs to calm down on being intentionally confusing. People out there that do that and think they're cool, you're fucking assholes, and I think God's going to have fun with you in afterlife. Or, you know, wherever you end up, you piece of shit. So, from there, go have Hawaiian barbecue for breakfast, because I'm awesome. It was delicious. Also, gotta say... This is a hot take. If you go to like a Hawaiian barbecue place, they usually give you uh, macaroni salad, rice, and meat. There's the move. You take the fork. You stab Mm -hmm. it in the macaroni salad. You stab a piece of meat. You grab a chunk of rice down the hatch. It's a combo. And it's damn good. You're a heretic. Anyway. Anyway. I'll die burning on that steak. You're welcome to it. Spelled S T E A K. Okay. So. (laughs) Boo this man. So, going and playing the tournament, there's 20 people there, most of which are prepping for this tournament. And there's two of my most loved to hate human beings playing in this tournament. One of which is this, like, douchey fuck that plays magic and thinks he's hot shit. I've never seen such a poser in all my life. His, his fucking Twitter has so many pictures of him with like cool people that he's like, yeah, we're friends. And in the picture, you can see that they are definitely not friends. (laughs) It's pictures where he's like jazz. And they're just kind of like, who the fuck is this guy? And, or God help me. Like, it's just, (laughs) it looks like an off camera. There's a guy with a gun being like, stand still like they could they gave up on trying to get the person to smile huh like him make me feel it (laughs) yeah they gave up on that one on the eighth take just stay in the frame was the request so there's this asshole who is lying about like being the owner of an esports team which is the weirdest flex 
like, yeah, I have a, I have a low level. E-. Like, he doesn't even say it's a high level esports team because it's just too easily fact checkable. Yeah. So it's like saying I have an intramural soccer team. No one fucking cares. Like, it's the weirdest thing to say to people. Yeah. So there's this fucking caustic toenail of a shitbox of a human. And then across from him is someone who desperately needs to learn lessons in magic, but everybody's too afraid to say it to him because I'm pretty sure he's a retired Marine who still likes to work out because he's like this black guy with a lovely shaved head, this tight mustache, six, two and fucking jacked. And so when he does dumb shit in magic, Nobody has the gumption to go, hey, (laughs) idiot, because they're worried he's going to use real life attack phases on their face. (laughs) So (laughs) these two chuckle fucks are playing. And my friend pointed it out. It was very sweet. They were because I was starting. I started off my day 0 and 3. So I was just fucking super dead. And my friends were being very caring. And they're like, hey, I wonder if Isaac's okay." You know, it's like kind of rough start to his day and, and like the upcoming tournament want him to be in like the tournament DC. I hope he's we want him to be in good spirits, you know, because they care and that's very sweet. And then one of my friends walks over, points out that these two guys are playing, and my first response is, Oh, cool. It's the human disaster versus the rain delay. I wonder how this is gonna shake out. <laughs> because the, the, the black the black retired presumed marine plays slower than Christmas in July. It takes him so long to make a decision. And then every turn, if you're playing a deck he doesn't like, you'll hear it not very much under his breath about how your deck sucks and he hates you. It's the fucking... (laughs) He sucks. He sucks so much ass and would know it if he wasn't such a fucking titan of a human. It's so fucking... (laughs) so that happened we played forever and had a had a lovely time and uh, yeah anyway i don't know where that got spurned from but the people needed to know anyway so you were at a soccer game or something uh i was and i hid from the sun mostly (laughs) fucking astro gets hot as fuck um Yeah, uh, alright, so, I don't know much else to talk about, so we're just gonna get into it. <laughs> I, I, I can't, I can't top giant fucking man threatening you, um, <laughs> just by existing. I can't top yeah. that. <laughs> like, he hasn't ever threatened anybody, I'm sure he's a nice guy, but Jesus it's, Christ. It's, it's, it's the, it's the potential. Yeah, it's also, yeah. he's not very warm, he's like, pretty cold, and thinks mm. he's right all the time, and he's wrong as fuck doesn't help because you're like all right well he clearly doesn't think logically so like fuck me <laughs> the best part is one of my fr- my friend who is legitimately and i don't say this as a slight legitimately a psychopath loves playing against him because he feeds off of this guy's salt my friend is like the opposite of a slug like salt like makes him like more powerful and this guy just him. yeah it really does and this guy feeds him he lo- he's the only person I know that enjoys playing against this man. Everybody else I've ever met hates it. I we literally there was a tournament we were gonna go play. We play once a week, me and my friends, at like a lower local shop. And we were playing on Fridays at one point. Now it's Mondays. Not that that fucking matters at all. And the tournament was gonna start, and there was gonna be like four to six of us. It was gonna be a really small group, and we're gonna play three rounds. And my friend saw that this, my friend who does not like playing against this guy, saw that he was in the tournament and goes, can we just drop and go home (laughs) instead of playing in the one day of magic we had a week? Like he (laughs) detests it that much. And I was like, yeah, it's probably the play. And we both just dipped. (laughs) Incredible. Yeah. All right. Before I continue getting caught in this cesspool of humanity. Yeah. We're going to. So 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 you don't nitpick other things about other people. <laughs> we are going to nitpick some things that um in in stuff that in works that we like. I've taught uh, you well. Bitch, please. <laughs> um we have compiled a list of like, you know, movies, shows and you know, 
other works that we we generally really like but there's just there's just something it's just like uh, uh, why can't, can't we fix this can we patch this out please so would you uh would you like to start or should i actually i'm gonna start because i want you to end cause, yeah yeah <laughs> I, I looked at the list. I was yeah, like, I, I ah! like, like, no, we, we, this, this is the grand finale. We're saving this <laughs> shit. Okay, so I, I love Brooklyn Nine Nine, and there is one dumb nitpick I have, and it just has one thing it never resolves, and it's this. It, it's early in the show, like, Ro- Boyle doesn't invite Rosa to his wedding. And she learns, and he he lies to her about why, and he says it's because Vivian doesn't want her to show up because it'd be awkward. Mm-hmm. And then she talks to Vivian. It turns out Charles just doesn't want to invite her for some reason. They never do anything with that. They never resolve it. They never explain it. They never address it. It just kind of fucks off to nowheresville. Which does it really matter? No. In the greater context of the show, it is completely relevant. They don't end up getting married anyways, so kind of who fucking cares? But it's just really weird. Like, it's just, it's never done. Like, they don't really leave loose threads like that in the rest of the show. Like, it's really clean. The writing is really clean. It's really crisp, and it doesn't do that. So it's just, it's a, it's a one-off oddity that I'm like, yeah, but why? <laughs> so, eh, that's that's my first little gripe. What uh, What's your first little gripe? I want to say I love the movie Creed, but I definitely did enjoy it. I thought it was a fun twist on a good old franchise. Sure. We have Sylvester Stallone in his like kind of comeback tour, which has mm-hmm. been kind of cool and has been kind of fun for him to not be like Rambo and like deliver lines instead of deliver punches. Sure. That got less and less believable as time went on. <laughs> It's just like, I mean, come on, like, the stuff he's doing, a, a fun show, maybe this should be my wreck of the week, actually, is, I, although I haven't seen it, so it's weird, but I've seen a zillion clips of it, because I just kind of like watching him be a gangster, okay. is Tulsa King, or like King of Tulsa, or whatever it is like that. I have no it, idea, I've never heard of this. It's on Paramount, so that's why, um, mm. just fucking who has, but it's like he becomes it's like this guy gets out of prison was part of an outfit in New York gets sent to Tulsa, Oklahoma of all places basically to die like they just kind of want to get rid of him get him outside out of mind except he like fucking does what he does and like makes it his takes over takes over but then like realizes wait I don't fucking need you guys and tells the outfit to fuck off pretty cool he throws like the occasional punch or two but it's mostly like smart and like good hmm. like witticisms and shit it's not right. like absurd like look at these 28 inch pythons or anything fucking i know i'm yeah. blending things at this point but like in creed he's a retired rocky he never fight he doesn't even come close to fighting he's just giving insight and wisdom it's great he's, he's just a coach right yeah he's just he's just a coach and michael b jordan in all of his fucking granite luxurious sexy self is doing an awesome job of being gorgeous and just whooping it wholesale ass the yeah. only issue for me and it's a good starting point is it creed michael Jordan's character has a chip on his shoulder his dad died he doesn't like his life he feels like he hasn't earned it or some shit whatever sure fine with that early on that's his problem and it becomes a problem and he gets he gets coaching on it he gets insight on it Mm-hmm. and it still happens a little bit and you're like okay maybe and then there's this opportunity where they're doing this like weigh in or whatever and the mm-hmm. other guy says some shit and this would be the moment for him to catch himself maybe get angry but you know stop mm-hmm. instead basically the only thing like he goes for it the only thing that stops him is people get in the way and like Rocky nearly has like a heart attack or something it's like have the character I know this isn't human but movies are sped up versions of humanity i would argue when they are being done well or with that intent sure have the character learn his lesson this is the thing that has gotten in his way have him learn that the movie works in spite of that because at the end of the day boxing goes and that's what we wanted but it'd be so much (laughs) sorry all i could hear 
was the fucking troll from the first Harry Potter just <laughs> but yeah just have the character learn his lesson that's kind of the only thing standing in the way of this movie being like flawless I mean, you could still, like, not enjoy it, but, like, having it have, like, no rough edges, that's the only thing for me that was, like, "Ah, I mean, okay, fine, whatever, and just, like, get past it. It's like, come on. And, I mean, that's a lot of what, obviously, they're gonna, just heads up, our nitpicks are gonna get a lot nittier and a lot pickier, but this is the essence of what we're talking about today, so. It's it's generally, just something we we very much enjoy, or enjoy. All all these, all these projects we enjoy. Yes. We, made, we made sure of that, that none of these are on the list, and we're just, like, stabbing something. Yeah, we're not, we're not just sake. punching down. These are things yeah. we generally consider good, and we'd recommend them. We're for... slapping our children. Yeah, we're just, you know, give... <laughs> come on. Spare the rods, spoil Do the Do better! <laughs> <laughs> Your you mom and I paid $8 each to be here. <laughs> Alright, speaking of things that fucking love, Arcade, listen, we we have sucked Arcane's dick enough. Um, oh, 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 fondled right, the fu- balls. Fondled the balls. Tickle the taint. You know it. Um, Swallow the gravy. <laughs> <laughs> repeatedly. Like, ad nauseum. However, I do have a gripe. And so, a little inside fucking baseball, I know why in the, in the fight between uh, Savika and Vi, fucking name yeah it's Savika. um she gets a shield in the game um one of one of my abilities gives her a shield okay neat a nod however <laughs> they the fact that they don't show that in some capacity or have like jace explain it when he's showing off the gauntlets or yeah. something they don't give an indication that that is part of the tech. All they show him do with it is crush a rock. Like, so which like, I mean, neat, awesome. Listen, <laughs> don't get me wrong. Tons of practical application here, but they they don't show it having defensive capabilities. So the fact that it just does it out of the blue when needed feels a bit too much like a dumb Deus Ex, and I don't like it. Like, also, I mean, in that scene, the whole like. Her talking to Vader's ghost is also a little Dave sexy. It was a little bizarre. Like I, I was kind of okay with it. Like, if for another reason, I just love Vader having more screen time before yeah. he's Warwick. Um, you think that's going to be happening? That's a hundred percent happening. All right, sweet. I, I, I say a hundred percent. It might not be, but I, having seen the trailer for season two, Warwick is definitely a part of it. And Vander was called the Hound of Zon. Warwick in the game is called the Hound of Zon. Hmm. Um, (laughs) so he's absolutely fucking rolling up and I don't know what he's going to do that I'm really excited to see but I do know who it is Um, but yeah so the fact that Vi's Gauntlet's just out of fucking left field get her a shield especially if you didn't play the game to no context for that ability you're kind of just like huh? the fuck is that? so I'm assuming Anyways. that's your passing the, <laughs> the metaphorical. Yeah, just... Huh? What is that? <laughs> so, The Place Beyond the Pines was a really great movie starring two of the better American acting leads at the time, and arguably still now, in, was it, uh, Bradley Cooper and Ryan... Not Reynolds. Um, Gosling? Gosling. Uh, fantastic roles. You got to have Ryan Gosling be this understandable sort of bad guy. Uh, you got to have Bradley Cooper be this kind of little bit of a, a nebbish cop. It was it was sweet. And then the third act happens. So, slight spoilers, although the movie's like over a decade old, and I don't think it really takes away from it. First act follows Ryan Gosling's character as he goes from like uh circus isn't quite right but like uh motorcycle performer to bank robber 
And then it does this really cool thing that I always kind of thought I'd literally written a script about where uh goes from one character to the other in a transition scene. And it's a really cool okay. transition scene where uh sadly Bradley Cooper's character ends up killing Ryan Gosling's character and then it switches perspectives to Bradley Cooper's character and him dealing with having killed a guy and all that happens with it afterwards. Mm-hmm. Which is really cool. And then from there we go on for a while, and then Bradley's Cooper character goes on and does big things and blah blah blah. And then the third act is their two sons. So Ryan Gosling has had a son, uh, and so has Bradley Cooper, and the sons meet up. Their storyline is so who gives a fuck <laughs> that it really tarnishes the first two acts. Because if it ends with him making a hard decision in the second act. To because basically he turns on a bunch of cop buddies that are stealing money from so Ryan Ryan Gosling's character stole the money, hid it, they could never find it, and then they end up finding it instead of turning it into the bank. The cops split it up amongst themselves, mm-hmm. and Bradley Cooper turns on them because that's not right. Again, like kind of nebbish good guy, yeah, and turns them in. Cool. Have it end with that. Have it end with him making a hard decision. Have it end with him dying because he turned in the cops. Do whatever. Don't have it go to now my son or now Bradley Cooper is going on to be a politician and his son sucks and the other son finds out and this and that. It's just tired and long and does very little to honor the legacy of the first two acts. Mm. And it's just, eh, it's just sad. Mm. Just like children. Am I right? Okay. Moving on. Whoa, whoa, easy, easy. <laughs> All right, so I had an epiphany while we while we were actually consolidating this list, and I had to include this. Um, the Little Mermaid, the whole prom, whole problem with her and Eric, uh, other than some of the odd flights of fancy and voyeurism involved. Um, <laughs> it, Look at that man! <clears throat> I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Um, <laughs> <laughs> other than that um can't she write <laughs> like like at no point is an attempt made like like can't like okay she can't and she can clearly communicate with him that she can't talk and she understands the words that are coming out of his mouth i swear to god you see her reading earlier in the earlier in the movie right like am i crazy no she's reading she <laughs> She literally is, like, jazzed about how many books she has and, like, looks through them. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, she can read. Presumably, she can, like, recreate some of it. He's a fucking nobleman. He's got paper. Like, he's not some commoner who, like, maybe just doesn't have paper because that used to not, like, that used to be actually a commodity. Motherfucker's like a duke. <laughs> Dude lives in a fucking mansion. He has a butler. The bitch has a ream of paper somewhere. Like, in a quill. Like, yeah. like it, it, why not just write it? Like, why not just write anything now? Fucking write do it, it with your poo. Who cares? Just fucking... Something. <laughs> like, it, it just, that seems like such an obvious fucking loophole for like, oh, you don't, you can't speak. Okay, that doesn't pin, impede things, but like, write him a note. This can't be that hard. Don't rely on fucking sea creatures wooing him for you. <laughs> Sha la 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 la. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like your romantic hopes shouldn't be confined to a fucking crab. <laughs> I mean, his orchestra's banger. Don't get me wrong, but still have a plan B. All right. Which also that begs the question: that motherfucker could hear the music, presumably. At no point did Prince Eric go, "Where the fuck is it coming from?" <laughs> Why are the frogs singing in unison? <laughs> yeah. Like, did he just... Anyways. <laughs> so, first Suicide Squad. Oh my god, what a disaster with a great trailer. Second oh. Suicide Squad. God damn that intro. Oh, The intro and the campaign, like the the like actors going on like late night shows and talking about mm. it that were in the movie then for 10 minutes, 15 minutes 
of wasted screen time that upon rewatch, everybody fast forwards through. James, I understand that you liked it. You thought it was funny. It gets tired on a literal second rewatch. There's no point to it. Just have them start in the field. Like, if they start in the mission, as opposed to that wind-up, I'm not going to say I'm okay with it, but it, it feels better. Like, I get the idea of, like, setting the stage and killing the people. But what, like, it takes a lot, there's a lot of, like, here's the fucking crew, and this is why they matter, and this, oh, and they're all dead. Like, thanks. <laughs> Need to hear the backstory of this dead piece of garbage? No, I don't. Just have them die on screen like they're going to in eight seconds. We didn't really care. Like, we don't have that much time to care about them anyway. You gave them an intro story and, like, two minutes of screen time. And just... If they start on the helicopter mid-flight, I yeah. think it it's better upon a rewatch. Sure. And it's, like, the rest of the movie, I don't say no notes, but nearly no notes. I can't think of any, like, critical ones that are legitimate. That is just, like, don't don't fucking waste my time with this. Oh, I got you. It's like, uh, I know who else is in the movie. So I know other people are going to like a lot of other people are going to be added to this at some point. So that's already still like whirring in my brain, but yeah. so don't like waste all this time. Just shave sure. 10 minutes out of the movie. Start on the helicopter. Let's get it over with. Other than that, fucking great. All right. So, what what I'm going to say has some spoilers for the movie. Talk to me. Isaac, you won't care. You're never going to watch this movie. This is true. Um, it is absolutely not your, up your alley. It's <laughs> truly not. It is a terrific horror movie, though. All right, it's probably one of the best horror movies I've seen in the last decade. Um, oh, no, I am going to see this. You are? I think so. This is the one with the hand, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can spoil it. I don't really care. Okay. But I, I do plan on eventually getting around to seeing it. Okay. The the big the the big plot point of the movie is basically possession goes wrong. Who would have fucking guessed? Um <laughs> Wait, so, what? <laughs> yeah, so the big thing is that the ghosts you invite in, they want to keep you, and so you limit how much interaction you have because they'll try to kill you. Because if they kill you while you're possessed, they get to keep you. It's kind of fucked. Do you mean like they get to switch places with you? No, like they get to keep your spirit. You have to you have to join them, and misery loves company. Ah, okay, got it's it. It's basically the idea. Yeah, yeah, got it. Um, that makes sense. So if they kill your body, you your spirit is strapped to them forever. So, um, they get this. They get the body of a kid, and they beat his fucking brains in. Like it is, it is savage. Um, where he's just like smashing his head against a fireplace, trying to kill himself. Because the spirits want him to die. It's savage. And every time... And so, like, he beats himself unconscious. Because someone intervenes and keeps him from splitting his head open. So they take his ass to a hospital. Yeah. And when he wakes up, he's still, like... He was possessed too long. So the spirits mm -hmm. still have influence. So he wakes up and starts smashing his head against a tile shower. Okay. At that point, you are a suicide risk. Mm -hmm. So when you're in a hospital... They put on a fucking pressure plate on your bed. The second you're out, alarms go off. The second you pull a single tube, alarms go off. Hospitals do this deliberately so that people who are legitimate concern, like they are concerns to their own well-being, they are monitored like a motherfucker. They watch you like a goddamn hawk because they are you are liable for them. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the movie, he goes missing. No. <laughs> That never happens. That motherfucker could never get out of the room without someone sprinting at them. <laughs> like, let alone... 28 days later style. <laughs> yeah, like, no, like, hospital stat, like, that would literally sound alarms through the whole fucking building. If it was that big a suicide risk, nah, ain't no fucking way. Like, he's probably monitored 24-7 if he's that big a risk, but absolutely there's a pressure plate on the bed that goes off. I know this because Artemis got surgery, and she was being stupid and just wouldn't stay in bed and they put that on. Like, and she, they were basically just worried she'd fall over because she had big fucking surgery and it's a lot of drugs. So, 
you can only imagine how much more heightened the security gets when you are literally trying to kill yourself. Yeah. Yeah. So, nah, you don't get to just pick someone up off that bed and leave the hospital. No, you're never making it out of the building unnoticed. But, like, otherwise, the movie is terrific. It's really good. But just that scene, I'm like, that can't happen. That, not like this. <laughs> like, that just yeah. doesn't work. What do you, what do you got next? So the dark Knight is a masterpiece. You know, Very we've good. got Heath Ledger giving the performance of a lifetime. FYI, it's not what fucking killed him. No, one could sure. argue his death was a mistake and not suicide. The other one is the argument that the imaginarium of Dr. Parnassus fucked with his head in a philosophical way that he didn't ever come down from. Those are both arguments talking to listening to interviews about that movie from cast members. He was having the best time of his life. That role did not kill him. Stop saying that. It was not the case. He definitely got a little method to start, but like on set, there's literally a thing you can see that is a screenshot that has the backstory of him doing an ollie over Christian Bale while Christian Bale's in full suit and he's dressed up as the Joker because they're having fun. <laughs> he was in great spirits. He was a joy to work with from everybody that talked to him. He was insane when the cameras were rolling, but with cameras were off, he was in a good place. He wasn't, like, going full crazy, and they should have been worried about him. Was yeah. not what happened. Okay, that aside. Lao does not matter that much in the movie. Stop spending screen time going to China to get him. Have him just, while on the camera, get taken by... Batman. Christian Bale. Yeah, have him just pop up behind him. They're like, oh shit, Lau. He's like, what the? Oh my god, how'd you go to my plane? D you do not need to make this a fucking caper to go to China to do something illegal to pick him up. You, It doesn't do anything. It's literally the same thing, except a lot less screen time, a lot less of him breaking international laws, which starts to, again, muddy his character a little, to do this. Just have him grab him. It's fine. Yeah, or not just have have him yoink him locally. You yeah. can still, you could still like the whole big reason for that scene is to introduce like the cell phone tech, which is like, mm -mm. cell phone text later. No cell phone text at the end. No, it's introduced to the scene in China. Gar Gar oh, the yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, sorry, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Like, sure. But you could but, just like, like do that and have him raid a building in Gotham or you, I don't think that matters introducing it then and having it later. Like, Fox is going to be like, hey, look, I did this cool thing with cell phones. Like, sure. Yeah. Like, you, you could definitely rewrite it around it, but it's like, if that's the whole scene for introducing it, you still just don't need to have the wind up where Bruce Wayne goes to visit or yeah. where Fox goes to visit. Yeah, it's, it's so much time to do something so whatever. And then also, it doesn't matter. The character's gone for the rest of the movie. Once he's picked up, it's not like. Yeah, it's, it's so much wasted time for something. So it, it clearly was somebody wanted an excuse to shoot that kind of scene. And that's how they manufactured it. It's reverse engineered. There's no way it wasn't. It just doesn't matter enough for it to not. 100% Christopher Nolan wanted to do this cool skyhook shot. And it looks cool. Good job, buddy. Also, who fucking cares? <laughs> Sorry. Love you. Keep making weird movies about time. Anyway, <laughs> dude, they're all about time and they're just getting more like he's hitting the bong a lot harder these days. These movies are getting fucking weird. I I cannot respect um, Tenet. Yeah. It's so what stupid. if time worked backwards, but also the same? Uh, what? what? Sir, what, set about, down the, <laughs> set down the no? PCP pipe. It's just yeah, it's Listen, you can't fucking put. You can't write scripts after smoking DMT. I'm sorry. You just can't <laughs> fucking do that. You know, he, smoking, his you millions know. of dollars at the box office seem to differ. <sighs> you're out of line, but you're right. You know? <laughs> Anyways, um, I listen. I love Godzilla movies. I love monster movies. I like the, the recent modernization of Godzilla movies. Um, I think they've been pretty good. I feel like there was some false advertising on the first one, where it's like, Brian Cranston, Brian Cranston, Brian Cranston, dead in 30 minutes. Um, <laughs> fucking absolute bait and switch. 
However, and I, I love the end fight of this. I love the fucking just absolute brawl between Godzilla and the Muto. It's terrific. The fact that they set up a fight in Hawaii and then don't actually do it angers me. The fact that they set the stage for his first like real big, real big monster brawl and the only coverage you see is literally news coverage that some girl is watching in a hospital room angers me. No, you don't. It's a monster movie. I came to see monsters fighting. You can't do this to me. Fuck you. <laughs> don't take away my shiny toy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's the usual argument with every Godzilla movie that everything the humans do doesn't fucking matter. It's stupid. But I just kind of ignore that at this point. Like, humans are dumb. They're gonna do dumb shit. It means nothing. I want to see Monster Smash. Alright. It was a Monster Smash! A Monster Smash! Anyway, what's next? So, The Secret of Nim was a, like, tent post of our growing up. Watched it multiple times. It scared many a children in the I, late 80s and early 90s. I was to say, the fact that Mom let us watch that when we were, like, eight is kind of crazy. Yeah, the movie is Ooh, terrifyingly is awesome. Fuck. It's cool as hell. Really fucking scary for, like, a, I think a G-rated... I, they really didn't care back in the day. They it let shit like be G-rated that probably should have been PG-13 on just like content. Not on like, you know, sex, violence, rock and roll. But it's like, man, this shit's dark. It's super dark. Awesome as shit. Thanks, Mom, for showing it to us. I'm sure it helped us turn out to be the weird kids we are today. <laughs> but Well done. Yeah. <laughs> Movie's a banger. It, it, it really is. I'm trying to remember his name. There's a there's an artist that worked on it that worked on a bunch of other stuff, and it was kind of like, hold on, one second. I it, need it to... is it is such a cool fucking art style, like all the all the set pieces and the staging on a lot of scenes is so cool. So this is something I I think a lot of the stuff that's done by Don Bluth is kind of like this. So like if you look at his catalog, I'm looking back. He's the one that did uh, Secret of Nim, American Tale, The Land Before Time, All Dogs Go to Heaven. And they all have this kind of look. Um, so okay. that those are that's the person that's responsible and was very much in charge of the design of it. And it's really, really awesome. Um, oh, I did Anastasia too. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So it, it's yeah, he's, he's very much that like that's American kind of Trail. his trademark. Yeah, okay. Fair enough. He did Titan AE. Yeah, that Ooh. one was... I scrolled through, I was like, wait, what? Oh. Also, it kind of tracks in, like, a 3D space a little bit, though, if you look at the sure. coloring and the shading. He really likes kind of, like, random... He likes shadows. He really likes... <laughs> he really likes making them deep and dark. Yeah. Anyway, movie's awesome. <coughs> Sorry. Movie goes along, and... They... You know, it's about these mice that live out in a field dealing with the fact that they've been exp experimented on. And, they're sentient now. Yeah, they're sentient. They can do things. It's this whole entire great story. It's very fantastic. It doesn't really go... I think it's based on a book or like a book series because I feel like part of the movie starts to go into the backstory of why they're like this and what happened to her husband. And I feel like there's more of a story there that's going to get told, but then just runtime wise, it doesn't. Sure, fine, whatever. It's a cool little, like, oh, interesting. Like, maybe they were going to make a second movie on it, didn't get greenlit. I don't fucking know. I, doesn't matter. It is not a book. Interesting. As far as I can tell. So, through a whole entire movie, we have used a lot of realism. Nope, I found it. It is based on the novel Miss Frisbee and the Rats of Nim. Okay, yeah, that sounds about right. So, I'm assuming there is more to the two parts of this that we're going to talk about. One, that there is human experimentation, which doesn't need to be told more because I feel like that's enough of a just thing that we accept humans do because we suck. So, kind of get that. 
Yeah. Anyway, movie's going on. We've got these mice. We've got these rats. They're sentient now because this thing that happened with the skills that they have had, but the circumstances they have in, they're in, they have made these technological advances in the society. Sure. Awesome. She needs to move her family because they're in the farmer's yard and the farmer's basically God. You know, and you can't, they're not going to try and kill It's hard to fight a tractor as a road. Yeah, hard to fight a tractor or the guy that can drive it or use a gun. So, I, the whole entire circumstance makes sense. They need to move her family home because her son is sick. And she kind of has, like, this lineage to allow them to make. She has a lineage of her husband is one of the people that was instrumental in this. Mm -hmm. And so that uses enough clout to get them to move her house. As opposed to them going, fuck off, lady, your kid's going to die. We're mice. We kind of make a lot of them. Yeah. Sure. Makes sense why this is all happening. Polit like backstabbing politics, literally, transpire. It's awesome. And then, with like minutes left of runtime, yeah. so we have all this, you know, we have all this sci-fi realism. The suspension of disbelief hasn't been too bad. Even though we have gotten, we're going pretty crazy. Like we have talking mice and experimentation. It it makes enough sense that you kind of hang. Even as a kid, I was like, got it. And then like 10 minutes left, we get magic. Yeah. Like they, they, so her house is like in a, in like in a hollowed out brick, essentially. And it gets dropped into a, or like a rope gets cut and it falls into this like quagmire of mud. And so it's sinking. So everyone inside is going to drown in mud. Fucking like, metal, for it's, the record. It's horrifying. It is so badass. <laughs> it is. Holy shit. How did we get to watch this as kids? Um, <laughs> yeah, it is. It is dreadful. Like, it is so uncomfortable. Just thinking about it, I'm like, oh, right. Here are the goosebumps. I hate this. Um, <laughs> but the, yeah. I, I don't know where. The dead old wizened guy, who's one of the first rats who remembers being sentient, just has this voiceover, and the brick lifts itself out of the mud, and just conveniently moves. Because. Yeah. That's so... Well, it's oh. because she's got this amulet, you see. <laughs> oh yeah, right. <laughs> that just, out of nowhere... Out of pocket. Okay, there has been nothing to suggest that, that is it real. is particularly powerful. I guess one character sees it and kind of loses his shit, but also he was a lunatic. Yeah. And like, also it's red and shiny and he's a rat. I don't fucking know. But it, it doesn't go, that's the amulet of power. That's there, There's nothing to belie this is going to do some busted ass shit. Yeah. It's just a thing that her husband gave her. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a memento of her dead husband. Like... It's important to her for sentimental reasons. Not because it's fucking magic. Yeah. <laughs> Not because it is a one-time fucking save the family maneuver. Free card, like. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a such a fucking weird jump the shark right at the end. Yeah. Alright. I I'm gonna break for him because I'm, I'm gonna complain about a video game. And something out of it. And it, it, it. So Illidan is one of the most iconic characters for World of Warcraft. Like, he he was one of the big fucking bosses of um, Burning Crusade. He, he was one of the big bosses in Warcraft 3. He is one of the big, big names who helps you in uh, the Legion expansion, actually. And him and the Illidari. And he has the dumbest weapon ever conceived. He, it, <laughs> it's so stupid. It, it's, it's just, it's just the worst designed weapon possible. Like, okay, so it's a big fucking metal gauntlet. So far, I'm fine with it. Your big, big fucking metal gauntlet adds a lot of weight to your punch. Okay, we're gonna put blades on the side of it. Okay. Here's the problem. They're not like straight, or something. And they're not, like, sided, so, like, one side is longer than the other. It's uniform. Okay. The problem is, they're, they they curve backwards. So, they curve towards the user. Okay. Um, 
I don't know if you've used a knife before. You don't want it to curve towards you. That makes it harder to hit them. And it's not subtle. It's not a small curve. It's like a fucking 40 degree curve. Like, it's a profound angle. So, to, to, to hit them with the sharp bit, you have to, like, hook your arm, and to not impale yourself, mind you, you have to, like, <laughs> swing your arm out so far. And again, you're losing range because the blade is actively curving away from them. Like, the, the best option to hit them is to fucking unga bunga hammer strike <laughs> fucking down straight. <laughs> so unga bunga. Yeah, but you know exactly the motion. I did. Pantomimed. Yeah, that's the best way you could hit some of these fucking things. Is is just full fucking Fred Flintstone and just bonk. Like it's so stupid. Just, just have the blades point forward. Have anything. Just just put the fucking blade like like blade the gauntlet at the front so you can like you, you have a longer strike and it's stab something anything cool it looks cool they're like green they're green silhouetted wings they they're emblematic that he's got big fucking wings and i don't care make it work just just make it not be stupid <sighs> okay i'm done i'm good we're good <sighs> i don't think this one's gonna be top of that one but again get- returning to christopher nolan the dark knight rises Fucking Christ, the pit. What the hell? <laughs> oh my god, Francine. The pit. pit. My god, pit. the pit. The pit. <laughs> so, it's so long. It's so dumb. It's like, we're Batman. We can't climb out of a pit. No one's ever done it before. <laughs> also, like, him getting there, it's just, it's such a colossal fuck. Actually, it kind of reminds me of, like, random aside, it reminds me of my problem with fucking uh, Deadpool 2. Just the amount of time that he spends in that prison fucking whinging about his dead wife. Holy fuck. (laughs) It's like, just, it's like, they have so much momentum and they just fucking cut its balls off. It's just such Space plants. It's oh my god. So like we go from that from this awesome fight of Bane beating the shit out of Batman, doing the back break in the fucking tunnel like straight out of the comic. Yeah. So fucking metal. It's super great. To oh I'm basically a retiree. I need medical attention uh, for like 30 minutes. It's so long. Yeah. Have him imprisoned in somewhere. Have him being watched by guys. No, I need him in a sad pit that no one's ever escaped from. Also, how is like how does one person not escape and just throw a rope down? Yeah, they have a rope. They have him suspended so he doesn't fucking fall to his death on the way down. Like if he makes it to the top, can't he just anchor himself and everyone comes out? Yeah. How have we not thought of this? This seems like a serious shortcoming. There's no security. It's like the most basic technology known to man. <laughs> like, we can't make an improvised ladder. There's, again, there's no one watching it. The point is that nobody gets out, but, like, clearly you can. Can we not make tools to fucking climb out? It's it's shoddy fucking sandstone. You can pierce that easily. Like, Christ. Yeah. It's just... It's just a plot point for... Like, it, it seems like he outsourced it. The rest of the movie holds pretty good. And he's like, you know what? I don't know what to do for the scene. What does Tumblr think? And then took the second idea and was like, that's good. I'm out. And like left. Cause, like, cause dude. The first just turned into fanfic with Bane fucking Batman. Duh. Yeah. Hmm. I I have one I have one nitpick about this movie that I have to add to. Please. Um so in his his dramatic return aggravates me. Um, so, and, and I love the fucking silly, I love that Scarecrow and fucking Killian Murphy just becomes a weird de facto fucking judge. Sure. I don't, it's just so bizarre. I love it. And he's sentencing people effectively to death by walking out on a frozen lake where the ice is thin enough that it cracks. <laughs> and so, so, and you see like some fucking scrawny ass 150 pound man go through the ice 
and drowned because he's like wearing a suit. It suits are really hard to swim in. Okay. Great. Terrific. Here for it. Okay. So we're marching cops out to kill them. Like old Gotham PD because, well, fucking Scarecrow doesn't like cops. This tracks. And fucking Batman rocks up. Okay. First off, Batman is buff as shit. Batman is easily going 230. That dude's built like a goddamn brick house. Okay, problem A. We saw a fucking scrawny businessman go through the ice, but this juggernaut of a human being isn't. Problem two, that fucker's wearing armor. He's heavier now. He's got, like, a full suit of Kevlar. That shit isn't light. That's probably adding 30 pounds to him anyways. Okay, so 230 went to 260 at least. To add insult to injury, this fucker had the audacity to pour out a bat symbol in gasoline and he lights it. I don't know let, if you know. Gotta let the people know. You gotta let them know. But I don't know if you know how ice works, motherfucker. <laughs> he doesn't do much for it. In fact, that might weaken the structural integrity. That fucker should just go poosh to the bottom. The fact see, he does it. He is thought stupid. of that and he made his suit lighter than air that lifts his fucking chunky ass body <laughs> off the ice enough that he doesn't sink to its Listen, depth. You, you, if he had a fuck, if he just stole Mr. Freeze's freeze ray and just hit the ice before he walked on it, sure, I don't care. <laughs> what a what a weird coalescence that would be. Pours down gasoline, lights it on fire, and then pulls out a freeze ray so he can walk across it. <laughs> It's fucking Guys, busted. it's it's worth it. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, when you see the director's cut, you'll like this moment. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Batman, I mean Christian Bale, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> Don't worry about it, Gordon. I mean, famous uh, British actor Gary Oldman, who has a Mar very good American accent. Alright, anyways. <laughs> anyways. Does All that right. feel too far? Feel too far. Uh, too far, too far. We also just need to stop before we just continue dunking on this. <laughs> All right, switching switching comic book franchises. Um, I love Tom Holland as Spider Man. I think he's my favorite part of the newer generation of MCU stuff. He's just fucking great. I think I think the Spider Man movies have been honestly pretty fucking great. Which thank God the James Gar or the Garfield ones were terrible. Um, yeah, they're a little rough. They were, they were. I do like that in the one thing they did get right in the James Garfield ones, or Andrew Garfield, sorry. Andrew Garfield. Yeah, I don't know why I said James. Uh, is that he's quippy. And that's one thing that we didn't get as much with the, like, uh, original ones with, um, Tobey Maguire. Tobey Maguire. Yeah. As a character, Spider Man is kind of like a shit talker because he's a kid. Yeah. Like I you think, gave a kid superpowers. <laughs> like yeah. he's gonna but talk I, shit. I'm absolutely like that's that's totally fair. And that's that's valid. Um but like I feel like you get that pretty well with Tom Holland. You do. But yeah. I think I think it takes Scarfield for us to get there. Sure. Like I, I didn't mind the, the tone set with Tobey Maguire, to be fair. Like it it's it's pretty, oh, it, it is a bit it, more solemn than anyways, anyways, I'm getting off topic. Okay. But I I love fucking homecoming i loved far from home i thought they were fucking great i i loved the way they did mysterio i thought that was super cool actually um and my problem is the 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 inciting action of no way home is so fucking stupid the insight here here is all that has to happen so that no way home doesn't happen. One of two things. One is that fucking Spider Man literally writes down what he who he wants to know who he is mm -hmm. before seeing Doctor Strange. Or two, the second he starts revising what he wants, Doctor Strange just cancels his spell and goes, "Okay, how about you get a fucking list for me so we can do this in one take?" Yeah. <laughs> like, but instead he just keeps going. Uh, like he doesn't have five minutes. Like. Like, how busy is Doctor Strange that that motherfucker doesn't have time for coffee? Like, what what does he have that is so pressing? He's willing to do a favor, but only if it takes me 45 seconds. <laughs> like, Jesus H. Christ, like, what the fuck are we talking about here? 
take two minutes and do it right. Measure twice, cut once. What are we doing? Like, this is basic. Instead, just neither of them do. And, like, I would say it makes more sense that Tom Holland keeps revising what he wants. But, like, Doctor Strange, my brother in Christ, you you have an incredible attention to detail. You were a fucking surgeon. You should understand the need for, for precision. You are the Sorcerer Supreme. You should know the ramifications of fucking changing shit mid-spell. What are we doing? Like, it's just, it's such a stupid idiot plot that's so, so needlessly avoidable. So, I, I don't know. Just make it so, like, the spell has problems, or, like, he, he accidentally cast a wider net than he meant to. I don't know, something. Just give it a better reason than he keeps redrawing it and overblows it. Anyways. <sighs> so, if you are a fan of this podcast, you'll know I fucking hate the ending of Limitless. <laughs> fucking hate it. He does. So much. The lead up to that is a little bit glib. Sure. But I think literally the movie changes the end in the ending. If the movie ends with him getting his comeuppance and Robert uh Wow. How did I fucking forget his name? Robert De Niro's character kind of getting the one up on him at the end. I think sure. the movie actually gets good. Okay. So TLDR in the movie starts off this kind of like loser who had, you know, talent, but never applied himself gets introduced to this drug where you get to use a hundred percent of your brain, more or less. It's not that stupid, but it's kind of stupid. And he ends up becoming super smart. Like, writes a book or something like that, makes some mm -hmm. money, ends up realizing he can make more with this if he, like, does day trading because he can kind of see through the Matrix. Yeah. Cool. There ends up being ramifications. It Like, you have to get more. Otherwise, it, like, fucks you up. Like, the, the come down is insanely bad for you. Okay. And ends up with, like, a large supply of it, so he's able to do stuff. But then he's got big, powerful people coming after him with big, powerful, like, ju like freaking, like, I was going to say juggernauts. Uh, mercenaries sure. coming to fuck him up. Cool. He ends up having to do some like heavy shit to survive. It's it has this weird premise where it's all about like more or less what you were born with. Because like he ends up fighting this guy later who has taken one of the pills, but is like a dumb Russian like mercenary, and so he's able to beat him and kill him. And then this is metal, and I appreciate it. Drinks his blood to get some of that power back so he can fight fucking metal okay. yeah fucking heavy but also he beat a guy who's on the pill because the other guy was born genetically like it kind of takes it, it becomes a uh, what's that thing that they still kind of do it in sweden sadly uh where like they they oh. won't let certain people have kids uh shit i know what you're talking about um eugenics yes eugenics it's kind of bringing this idea of eugenics around where it's like, well, if you're born special, then you're better. It's like, no. Yeah. Like, not really. Come on. Like, this this idea, like, it has a kernel of truth in a pile of shit. It's just yeah. like, that's not, no. I also point out that blood is, that's not, blood doesn't convey pretty much any neurological information, but that's besides the point. Well, I mean, he's he's getting he's trying to get the ingredients of the pill, not the. Oh, yeah. OK, that's he okay. didn't become a brain vampire. He's just like, I need the like, you've got the pill in your bloodstream. I need that. Okay. As so he's literally I... doing it for an immediate thing. OK, never mind. Yeah, that makes way more sense. Yeah, still metal silly. Track. Probably doesn't work, but it's cool and fucking tracks enough that I'm sure to let that it is that. that is at least not totally stupid. Yeah. So. He goes through all this awesome, gets to the end of the movie, like, he, he has had to effectively fight bad guys and win, has had one low moment where he had to, like, get re really resourceful. Love it, but again, this movie, in a way, is recommending drug use, which I'm not a fan of. And then, the end of the movie, Robert Nero's character comes up and goes, by the way, I fucking found out what you're doing, that you were trying to hide. And I own it all now, so you kind of, like, because he's trying to be a politician to, like, do better things in the world. Sure. Which, cool, noble idea, use your powers for good. But Robert De Niro's like, yeah, I'm a fucking 
I I own a hedge fund. I have crazy resources. I figured your shit out and I got it. So now you have to you have to pass the laws I want if you don't want to like become a worthless sack of shit like you used to be. And it's like, oh, that's a really fucking cool problem. And it's like there's not that much runtime left. If it ends here, this guy's in a quandary. And we can, you know, have the fucking the ending of Inception moment where like, what does he do? Yeah. Like maybe this sets up for a, a sequel. Maybe we just like are left sitting like, wow, he's in a pickle. This is an interesting thought experiment. Yeah. Fascinating. What would you do here? Instead, three seconds later, Bradley Cooper's like, uh, sir, I'm the main character. I'm handsome. I'm sexy. I have plot armor like a motherfucker. I have plot armor like God. Uh, I figured this. I knew that you were coming, so I did this absurd thing and blah 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 blah. It's like, uh, like so. The fix is he saw this problem coming a mile out, so he weaned himself off the drug, but still had the benefits. That's not how drugs. Work. What? That's not. You can't. Works. The phrase stands. You cannot have your cake and eat it too. You cannot have none of the problems with the drug, but the benefits. That defeats the purpose of it as a plot device. Also, talk to anybody who's taken antipsychotics. That's not how those work. Also, that. But like, how boring? Like, how boring? Like, let, let me tell you a short story. A guy finds a drug and then gets to have the drug benefit without the drug cost. What a great story, right? No, there's no conflict. <laughs> You need to, like, there needs to be a push-pull. I mean, they can even have it where he just weans himself off and he's just back to being a regular guy, but he's just motivated. Now. Yes! That would have been great! That would have been, like, him suffering and being, like, and, like, looking at the pill or, like, seeing somebody have it or something and having that moment of longing but realizing that he likes and appreciates his life now that he doesn't have to be on this thing. There's plenty of great ways to write the ending of this. Yeah. Or you could Being just like, like, I'm God is not one of them. Yeah, you could just show like the last scene, just being like him being elected and like his first day in office or something, and him just like having one pill in his pocket and like throwing it away or something. Yeah. Or like a, a like him threatening to relapse and have it end with a nod. Yeah. Also, like, by the way, when I say he's God, I don't remember if it's in the TV though shit came, that came next. Or if it's in the ending scene, I forgot about it. There is a attempted assassination attempt on him when he's like taking office, and he still has the superpower to notice that a sniper is training a shot on him while giving a speech, and they're like a mile out. So what? Fuck you. Yeah, that's so that's, stupid. That's not intelligent. That that's just superpower. That's pre No, no. He, like it, it gives you superpowers. He like learns kung fu in an instant from having high watched Bruce Lee movies. That That's actually what... at least like makes sense of, cause you actually, you visual, you could see something. So in theory, yes, if you're super smart, you can mimic it appropriately. Okay, fine. I can give that a pass. But if you can't see, you can't see a mile out. You literally, your, your eyes, you are not an eagle. <laughs> <laughs> Sure. <laughs> Your eyes can't perceive detail that far away. Also, he perceives like the way, like the direction and how and this. Like he he does like complicated math that he has no reason to know in an instant. Again, while giving a speech, which takes a lot of attention. Yeah, it's not something you do offhandedly. You don't do it while you're playing Candy Crush on your phone. Yeah, like, just make Stupid. it make it cost something. Yeah. All right. What's All your right. last entry for this? My lesson? last entry. I really like the show Chuck. It's goofy. It's gimmicky as shit. It's it's dumb nerdy fun. It's it's like late two thousands show at, at kind of its best. And I I love Zachary Levi as the main character. It's fucking great. Oh my god, the fight choreography is atrocious. Oh my god! Oh microphone! <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's it's so it's so bad, Isaac. It's so bad. <laughs> it's so bad. It's it's like it's it's 
it was like they watched toddlers fight and they they <laughs> mimicked what they saw like the punches look so weak the people who are like and it would make sense if Zachary Levi didn't know how to throw a punch he's he's part of the fucking geek squad essentially like he is a fucking nerd who does like AV work and works in an electronics store that motherfucker would not know how to fight fine but the people who are agents who are assigned to shadow him and make sure he can't die because he has a supercomputer in his head, effectively, like he, yeah. he effectively has a registry of every like covert operative file ever in his brain. Um, so they shadow him. And so it makes sense that they would know how to fight. It doesn't look convincing in the slightest. It's so it's heinous. It's it's so ugly. Like, I I. I Ooh, it's bad. It really does look like watching five-year-olds fight. The movement is so janky. The punches look so inauthentic. It's so awkward. It's painful. And, like, their attempts to look fancier and do, like, spinning stuff makes it worse. It's so bad. Like, <laughs> it's like Jim Cotta levels of bad and awkward. Like, it's so atrocious. That at least looked fluid. This is so awkward. Like, that is... For the quick grade on fight choreography in general, you have two options. One is you make it super, super fluid, so it flows like a motherfucker. Easiest example I can think of off the top of my head, like, a lot of old Bruce Lee movies, for something more modern, you've got shit like The Raid. Holy shit, it's gorgeous. It's not realistic, necessarily. Goddamn, I don't care. It's so good to watch. Okay. Yeah. Your other option is you have something that's really heavy and feels weighty, and it's awkward. Uh, easy example is, like, Atomic Blonde where just, like, punches, people just look punch-drunk, it's clumsy, people are falling over shit, they're concussed. It's hyper-realism. Yes. Yeah. That, that is, those are your two good options. This is the worst of both of those. <laughs> what if? <laughs> what Hear if me just, out! <laughs> what if we just got drunk and tried to make it look fluid? No! 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 <laughs> oh! My God! Like, <laughs> it's so bad! And it never gets better! That's the crazy part, is, like, the show had four seasons, five seasons, and it doesn't really get better. Like, like at no point do they hire someone on who's taken a single boxing lesson in their life. Like, just one. Like, at least know how to plant your feet and throw a punch. Just no one ever does. Oh. Okay. I'm gonna sit back and grab some popcorn. Take it away, Isaac. <laughs> Because I've, I've heard this rant, and I'm so excited. I love it. It's great. So I feel like I've also done this rant before, too, but I stand by its needing to be on this list. Growing up, so when I was 15, I think, maybe 14? That sounds about right. I was introduced to this awesome anime by a neighbor down the street called Escaflone. It had been shown on Fox for a little bit. It was who, dubbed. Who showed you this? Come uh on. Huh? Was it Khan? No, he was the guy that used to ride the bus. You, he might have graduated before you started riding the bus. Right. He was fucking like tall with long ass hair. Uh, I, don't know, I don't remember his name. He introduced me to anime. Okay. Um. Thank you, person. Yeah. So watched. I had seen like you know some Studio Ghibli movies here and there. Okay. I think I had been exposed to Naruto when I visited our cousin Zach and Jeremy because Jeremy had like. Uh, he went to like an anime club and they were just like watching anime episodes in this gigantic ass fucking lecture hall which is kind of awesome that's pretty baller I respect yeah that. and so I remember seeing like one of the tuning exam episodes of Naruto I was like dude fucking anime rocks this show's dope what is this <laughs> uh, but then was watching Escaflone on uh, Fox Saturday morning cartoons it's dope got into a little bit and then it like they stopped airing it or something? And huh. I was like, that's weird. Okay. And I talked with it about this kid who I thought was really cool on our bus. And he goes, oh, yeah, I, that's Escaflone. I have it. When he said he had it, this is back in the day, he had a security tape VHS, which means the amount of the size of it, like the internal size is bigger. And he had recorded the whole show on one VHS. <laughs> It was like a all fucking brick. nine hours. Yeah, it was fucking huge. And I was like, all right, sick. And he goes, yeah, you can borrow it. And so I watched this once, 
by myself, I think, or with you, and then once with mom. I no, I think I think you watched it with Kevin. I watched it with Kevin for sure, but I was just okay. remember like I I never watched it. Mom like ushered me out the first time you watched. it. I think we might have watched <laughs> it later. I would have been like I think it was like eight or something. And mom's like, nope, not for you. Like, okay, like. <laughs> Um, I do remember watching it with you. Okay, so I've I've watched it through at least two or three times. Uh, I remember watching it through with mom, which was kind of bizarre and fun. Um, she has those moments. It's it's so bizarre. Mom, I there's a non-zero chance you're listening to this. Thank you so much for introducing us to comic books, to graphic novels, to anime, and letting us watch it and being there with us. That yeah. was great. You're letting the best. us figure out our stuff. Yeah, you're awesome. Love you, mom. Lay bam. And now, Dad, you can fuck off. No. <laughs> Kick rocks, old man. Really? Baseball again? Neat. Love that sport. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just kidding, Dad. I love you. <laughs> but watching this anime all the way through, it is such a banger. If those of you haven't seen it, I think it's called Visions of Escaflown is the full given name. Yep. Highly recommend watching it. I'm just going to say stop at a very certain point. You're going to want to stop uh, halfway through. There's going to be a moment where they're on a bridge at the end about to kiss. Stop right there. Stop. It's the last episode. You know, it's last. Stop. Right. Stop right there. That's the end of the show. Nothing happens after that. Definitely stop and uh, close the window, pull out the VHS, the DVD, the Blu-ray. Stop right there. Don't watch another minute. Don't look up anything else. That's how it ends. If you actually want to know how it ends. So this show has been building up. You start with this girl. She's on Earth. She's got this guy she thinks is cute, but her friends like actually dating him or seeing him yep. like their beginnings of a relationship are happening. Yep. And. Poor Tommy. Poor Tommy. Hitomi, through a weird series of events, Vaughn gets transported to Earth while hunting a fucking dragon. Which, banger ending to episode one is him fighting a dragon. Yeah. Also, the way their dragons are is fucking awesome. They're not these particularly great, like, nimble beasts with wings. They're like chunguses. There's like, <laughs> fat, fire-breathing shitheads. Like, they're like a monitor lizard yeah. that is humongous that breathes fire. It's yeah. great. Oh, it's not even like breeze fire, it like vomits fire. It has to like build up and go barf. Yeah. Like it's it's so awesome. But it looks amazing and it's old animation style, which if you've seen old animation, you can tell the difference. You yeah. can see the pe the pencil strokes. It's fucking gorgeous. There's a reason that it's aged very well to its hand. Oh yeah. Hundred percent rewatchable up until a certain point, which we'll get to in five seconds. So she then he kills the dragon, kind of via her help. Steals the heart, which he needs for something that hasn't been disclosed yet. She and him then get transported through a weird, like, cosmic fucking... They basically get fucking beamed up. They get beamed back to his world somehow. It's not explained. Which is great. Doesn't need to be. <laughs> we do have dragons. Magic is clearly on the table. Yeah, fuck it. Who cares? We get beamed back over there. Yeah. The story starts to take place. So, her life that she has left, she had an unrequented love that was going out with her best friend yep. and she was doing okay at track and field. Yep. She's not, she doesn't have this great life that she needs to return home to. She's kind of listless and kind of depressed. Yep. Things aren't she, great. She gets beamed over to this world. She finds out in this world and arguably back on earth a little bit. She kind of has this magical ability to sort of see the future. In a weird way. It's like they're tarot card reading. Well, I mean, yes, but it's, she's got the pendant thing. Oh, yeah, right. Where she's, she's able like, to like, kind of like see she's, directionally. Yeah, she's like divination, essentially. Yeah. It's not particularly controllable, but she, it just happens to her sometimes. Story goes on. And through, I don't want to tell the rest of the story because it's awesome and you all should watch it. She starts to grow feelings between two characters, one of which she finds out is sort of interested in her, but also sort of not. And she falls out of love with him, still respects him, but he kind of fucks off and does his own thing. She realizes she loves Vaughn. Awesome. It's been a love triangle. Well, they won't they this whole entire time. 
and you've wanted them to get together. Fantastic. The show is ending. There's minutes left. Walking on a bridge. Proclaims her love. They hug. I think they might even kiss. And then... She gets BAM back to fucking Earth! <laughs> what the goes. hell? Let her have something nice! There it goes. She's suffered so much! <laughs> She's had friends and people die in front of her. Seeing the, like... The mech equivalent of World War II and the fucking atomic bomb. She's seen some shit. <laughs> Let her have this. Oh, but no, she has to go back to where she comes from. Why? She didn't learn a lesson. She didn't experience, like, she's gotten to live a life that is more grand and affirming. Let her have it. Also, it's like five minutes of her beaming back and people waving goodbye to just, like, Lord of the Rings, fucking Return of the King, dagger time rip me? <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> she deserves it! Why are her gonna be so happy? You asshole! <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> it's so close to perfection, and you dicked on it! In a ten minute fucking... <laughs> like, credit filled... Fuck fest, you <laughs> dick licker. <laughs> uh. And then the audacity, the post credit sequence of her looking in a mirror outside of her prom. Was she standing alone, by the way? <laughs> and looking in the mirror and seeing a reflection of Vaughn and going, I hope you're doing okay. Cut to black. Fuck you! <laughs> Oh, I can't breathe. <laughs> that totally oh. deserves so much better. There's no the best best part. There's no reason. There's no reason. It's literally like okay. So 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 there's there the one thing I can think of. It's like a decent one to one comparison. Is like the end of uh, Amber Spyglass, which is fucking heartrending. Because they have two characters who are young, who fall in love, and they have to separate. Which is savage. Because you can't exist outside your own universe. You just start mm. to die. Yeah, yeah. And so, like, they see the result of, like, the the boy's dad has been gone for ten years. And he's just, like, on death's door. He's just, like, it's like it's aged him five times as fast. Mm. And so it's like, there is a real fucking reason they can't be together. And it sucks balls. There is no reason for Hitomi to leave. <laughs> yeah. There's there's no there's no incentive for her to go. Like she could stay in be nobility. Yeah. She's built a life, she has friends. <laughs> She's a I think the director or the like a producer had a girlfriend named Hitomi and he just wanted to stick it to that <laughs> bitch one last time. Just, just, no happiness for you. Poor. <laughs> the fucking, fucking artist, the artist arguing like are we? She's like, fucking do it. <laughs> Fuck that bitch. How dare she leave me? I need a moment. We're going to <laughs> an ad break. Okay. Fuck! <laughs> I can't. Oh, I need to pee. <laughs> Have you ever wanted to feel some mainstream appeal as a nerd? Have you wanted to indulge in a little bit of power fantasy? Do you love when the good guy wins in the end, and most things wrap up with a nice little bow on top? Might I interest you in some comic book movies? With them tasty comic book movies, you get the first grade moral lessons with explosions and punches for punctuation to emphasize. Add in some clear expectations of who's your villain versus who is our hero, and you found yourself a winning formula that will undoubtedly appeal to the masses. So what are you waiting for? Go embark on that hero's journey to get the MacGuffin. It's coming to a theater near you this summer. Hello! Welcome back! So, uh... I don't have a movie or TV show to recommend this week. Mm. I have... I know, it's like ass. 
uh, my lady friend has shown me this awesome uh, YouTube video. It's very long, though. It's like 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. It'll be in the references below. But if you want to look it up, it's called A Terrible Guide to the Terrible Terminology of U.S. Health Insurance. That sounds like a horrible video to watch, it except that it's done by an awesome YouTuber. I don't know if you've seen the, uh, like the YouTube video, like how to make jorts. It's something that like, you'll recognize the guy. I think most people, when you see it, he's very funny and he does a great job of not only being funny, but being informative. This is like definitely one of those awesome blends that I feel like has come around during our timeline, which is information presented as comedy, yeah. but without losing either aspects to it. Yeah. And it's really fantastic. And especially given health insurance in this country is one of its big fucking nightmares. Uh, I would highly recommend this video. I'm trying to remember who it's by. Who the fuck is this by? It's by Brian David Gilbert. It's a couple years old now, but it's still very accurate and very fucking funny. Uh, I would highly recommend giving that a watch. It's 30 minutes. It's very informative, very funny. What about you? What you been, uh, what you recommend? I to people got recommended the show Chaos on Netflix by three different people. And I was like, all right, fuck it. We'll give it a shot. It's fucking great. Um, <laughs> it's, it's like a modern, a kind of modern Greek mythology story. Uh -huh. That is not just more Percy Jackson or Percy Jackson adjacent shenanigans, though not to hate on those. Terrific on their own right. But it's cool to see something very different. Where you have the gods are dicks. Just, Which, I mean, wholesale assholes. <laughs> Myth mythologically speaking, accurate, accurate as fuck. Um, <laughs> but like, and you have Jeff Goldblum as a cunty, arrogant, paranoid Zeus. Tremendous. Um, and it has. It's kind of funny because it has some really good contrast with some characters are very modern spoken and kind of simple spoken. And some of just such elegant and, you know, they've such prose and, and some just don't. It's great. Um, it also, side note, it has probably one of the best, um, like, trans representations I've ever seen. Sick. Which is really cool. And I've also learned the actor playing the part is, in fact, trans. So, awesome. Um, I slide, yep. slide aside, not necessary, but appreciated. Yeah, I'm, I'm, it definitely lends like a degree of authenticity to it. And yep. I'll, I will bet that they gave some insight to writing. Yeah, for I, sure. I will bet. Anyways, um, but like super cool. And they did a good job having that be a very key element of their character without making it all encompassing. Were they a god or? No, they are not. Oh, uh, dang. Um, there are some gods that you could argue are trans or like could be portrayed as trans and it would like work right sure you, you can argue a lot of weird shit with greek mythology <laughs> um the the character that they're referencing is not one i was familiar with uh they are trans in greek mythology it was like really how about that now why they're trans is kind of fucked because poseidon's an asshole turns out um, still checks out <laughs> but the show of on it's all it's it's great it does a lot of fun it has terrific i i'm always kind of a sucker for good like voiceover narration and the guy they had playing prometheus did such a good job of it um it's it's a lot of fun you kind of know by episode one if you're in or out like because it's a lot more of that style and either Sick. you will hate it or you'll love it i personally yeah, yeah. loved it um it's only eight episodes right now i think they're going to do a season two um Sweet. But yeah it is it is really cool interpretations of what the gods are like it is really cool kind of interpretations of fate and myth and it's it's fucking fun so i uh, give it a shot so something else that is very fun is loser by fake shark i there's some other song that i like by them but i was just like listening to them on the either it was like the treadmill or the way to work and it came up in like you know shuffle and i was like oh i like this band i like this song let's see what else they have and found this one it's like uh Let's go. This is fun. Nice. It's a bop. You do love a good bop. <clears throat> love me a good bop. You got any, you got any good bops? I actually you know do. Oh, um, shit! So, I found last night, they're just like, Caravan Palace, they apparently put out an album a few months ago, and they just had oh, like a, 
a big thing. It's like, um, like gangster gangster melody something. It it's kind of, it's a goofy album title. Of course it is. Um, but the song "Reverse" by Caravan Palace. Ooh, I had to replay that one immediately. Like, like oh damn, this one this one's great. The rest of the album is pretty good. It's it's more like it's more Caravan Palace. But like this mm. song in particular stood out to me. I was I was about it. You're talking about Gangster's Melody Club. Thank you. Yeah. So if you, uh, I know I mentioned earlier I've been playing some Space Marine Two. That has been pretty fun. Um, God damn, I love using the Thor hammer. It's so fucking satisfying. Well, wait your turn, motherfucker, because I too have been playing a game. If you want to get unemployed like I'm going to, <laughs> enjoy playing Bellatro now on mobile. Oh, Lord. Because nothing says I can't stop fake gambling like ruining your life <laughs> while on the go. I believe I recommended this game a while ago, but if you I didn't... absolutely did. I absolutely I'm, now, did. I'm now scared for you that you can access it at all hours of the day. Yeah, all hours of the time. So one of the benefits is that if I walked away from my computer, I couldn't play Bellatro. Oops! <laughs> Now it follows you. It's in your pockets. It's such a great game. Highly recommend. It's coming from inside the house. Um, (laughs) Fucking what? (laughs) What? But yeah, if if Bellatro now on mobile. This this ad read was not sponsored. (laughs) But hey. But if you're at your computer and you want to not, if you're at your computer and you're too busy blottering on your phone, something you can do on your computer, this is really weird. But so Adult Swim has those in between kind of musical moments in between shows that are kind of fun. Sure. And if you enjoy that on Max, mm-hmm. HBO Max, because saying Max is just weird to me still. It's still weird, yeah. Yeah. If you go on the HBO website, Max, that sounds better. Uh, they have this series called Ambient Swim that mm-hmm. is that, but for like 30 minutes at a whack. Uh-uh. And so it's this really good background. It's got a light, fun animation, but it's not a story. It's just like a repetitive animation. But if you want to have something in the background, maybe something to like kind of like let your eyes glaze over at and just mm-hmm. vibe. It's so good. And there's hours of it. They have like, I think like 10 plus 30 minute chunks that they'll just play one into the other. Mm-hmm. It's a great thing if you need, like, a background for while well, you're hanging out with a friend and you're doing a something or just, like, chit chat. If you want something in the background, highly recommend throwing that on. All right. Did you want to talk more about Vijima games? Sorry, I, did, I just realized it, it just got rolled you over. Um, <laughs> so, um, if you kind of like Years of War... Um, that is pretty much what Space Marine 2 is. It's it's very much the same kind of shtick. Um, it so far it's been a lot of fun. It feels it feels really like Left 4 Dead meets Gears of War. It it is I, I will say this. I have never felt so satisfied just cleaving through waves of enemies. Oh good lord the power fantasy. Mama inject it into my veins. Um and I thought my buddy was joking. He's like, you will try the hammer and you'll never want to go back. My God, that man was right. Um, holy shit, just hammering people in the next week is outstanding. Just smashing a fucking tear in its head in with a hammer. Ooh, choice. Um, so yeah, it's it's a good, like, it's it's been a lot of fun. If, if you, like, if you ever played Gears of War and you liked it, if you played Left 4 Dead and you really liked it, it's it feels really like a bit of a fusion of those two games. It's also I'm looking at I'm looking at some of the gameplay footage. It's fucking gorgeous. It looks really good. Like the set pieces are really well done. The mob design is really well done. Um it's my 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 only complaint with it is like there's two there's two kind of minor complaints with it. One is that it's dodge, it sometimes feels unresponsive. And the other is it doesn't have any kind of input queuing. So what I mean by that is if you like if you attack Mm-hmm. And you go, oh shit, and you like quick tap to dodge. If the attack hasn't finished, or like you, you try to chain attacks, it, you can't just like spam click and have things trigger. You have to wait for animations to finish to do your next action. Which sometimes you get fucking, you mistime it 
and you just won't do something you intended to. So like you'll you'll miss time a parry and you won't actually parry, which is really frustrating. Or like you can't parry out of an attack animation, things like that. It's not bad, but it definitely takes a little bit of getting used to. I've seen I just realized I've seen some of the cinematics for this game being like levied as like a movie. And now I'm seeing as to why like the cinematics for this game are just off the charts. Yeah, I haven't I haven't played the campaign. I've mostly just been playing operations with people, but like yeah. I played the first level of the campaign, which has a pretty fucking dope cinematic of like a helicopter being ripped apart by Tyranids. Um Yeah. It, if people actually do 40k lore, they'd probably enjoy it more. I know yeah. fucking dick off, but it's still a lot of fun. So, fun fun fact, speaking of this is the closest I'm probably ever going to get to playing Warhammer 40k, just because I can't be bothered to fucking mether 0.1 fucking inches. Yeah. Our favorite shop growing up. God bless TND. Yeah, next dimension, comics and games. Yep. Was run by one Charles Metz, aka Chuck. God bless that he, man. He played every game, including Warhammer 40k. His army... You remember this? He had it in the window when you walked in. It was like in a little glass case. He, I think it had... Did he have a Tyranid army? He had Tyranids. And they were each of his units because Tyranids are this, like, they are seen as this disease. Each of his Tyranid groups were named after a, like, deadly disease. I didn't know that. That's awesome. Yeah, it's really cool. So, no way in chance in hell you're hearing this, but Chuck, thank you so much. You're probably the reason that we're doing this and doing half the other show we did. So, yeah, God bless you for having a nerd haven in an otherwise very hillbilly town. <laughs> Fact. God, let's call a spade a spade. Like, well, to wrap this thing up. As we as we always do. Speaking yeah. of nerd havens, what are what are we doing a quip off of we, today? We are doing a quip off of our our dumb favorite comedic duo on the internet, Game Grumps. Because they have plenty of fucking material and it's too good to not do. Yeah. So enjoy our nerd haven as we quip off for the next two minutes. You ready, Freddy? Oh, we're ready. Ah, my dick's falling off! <laughs> Jennifer dumped me. Your saddest, shortest story yet. <laughs> so the plant's been nothing but the death of you. What luck! Infinidaga! <laughs> I'm the video game boy. I'm the one who wins! Nothing, 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 nothing. Don't believe me? Check my resume! 30 years and jerk it off! Oh, if it hurts bad like when you have Taco Bell I need to vom! You must die. <laughs> I'll tell you what you gotta do, Aaron. I don't know the fault to that one. If you're just, looking... You must die. <laughs> Oh shit, I'm out of Estus Flex. The uh, Die! Hey, hey, Michelle, they're doing an impression of me. I'm gonna pray. <laughs> Do it. Stew it. <laughs> Blew it. Higgledy fucking piggledy, dude! This game is fucking garbage! That is such real, legit rage you're hearing. No, they can't be both! It's Adam and Eve, not Adam and... <laughs> <laughs> Take the shot. What, you think I came out with the pussy drawn like fucking Mozart? <laughs> what? I don't think I've heard that. That's amazing. <laughs> Uh, Danny and Arnold. Um. Stay in school.
Don't do drugs. Eat your teeth. We got the poop. Is this wheel weighted? Aaron, I I spelled E Y E. <laughs> you spelled the T. <laughs> I got embarrassed. Putting fucking water black cannon. <laughs> Fired and a missed. <laughs> I reached for a popsicle. It fell on the floor. <laughs> oh god. It's Clifford the big red stab wound. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Batman. <laughs> Roly poly. <laughs> this man is dead. Bang. Please poke head out. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I'm laughing too much. I can't think. <laughs> I don't understand why the Chinese can't just <laughs> use forks and spoons. But I'm too old to get up and go to the kitchen. There's like an hour more game groups I can think of, and I can't fucking think right now. <laughs> Tell my brother, I love him. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I don't have any more men. Where's Andorra? <laughs> It's not Sweden. <laughs> it's Ania Mania. <laughs> Did you hit start your timer, by the way? Yeah. Oh, God. I just, I just can't. I just can't stop. <laughs> After all, I want to play Call of Duty Shooter Man. Man. <laughs> Oh, oh microphone. <laughs> it's not unusual. <laughs> I love that he goes into Tom Jones. <laughs> I'm Tom Jones. Leave the Tom Jones coat. <laughs> I'm done. I'm fucking done. This is bullshit. Red plant, purple plant, <laughs> blue plant. Hmm, funny joke. <laughs> Damn it, I was gonna say. Funny joke! <laughs> Getting more unhinged. Oh, uh, if you want more unhinged. Damn, mama! <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> and with that. <laughs> That's our episode. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in. If you enjoyed it. Please feel free to like, comment, comment and survive. <laughs> <laughs> but don't forget, new episodes of Super Pros Bros come out the first and third Saturday of every month. Bye. Bye.